In this video, I'm going to show you how to create repeatable seamless patterns with Midjourney version 5 that you can then sell on various different print on demand products. So before we get started, I have to mention that if you want to sell the graphics that you generate with Midjourney, then you need to have at least the $10 subscription plan for the commercial license. You can still try out Midjourney for free. That's not a problem. You just can't sell the images that way. But yeah, to get started with creating patterns, I do like to usually set a suffix right here that always gets added to the end of our prompts just to save time. And to do that, type in forward slash suffix then the prefer suffix option will come up just click into this and then click new value right here and what we're going to put here is first of all pattern so we don't have to keep writing that again and again then dash dash tile that's the actual function within mid journey that makes your pattern repeatable and seamless then i like to add dash dash no watermark we'll also put dash dash stylize the stylize function right here is actually uh, ranging from zero to a thousand and the higher the number the more stylized the image will be meaning the more sort of creative input mid journey will have i will put up a comparison between stylize zero and stylize a thousand up on the screen right now i typically like to put 500 right here for patterns um, obviously you can play around with the number and see what works best for you but besides that all we have to add at the end is dash dash v space 5 for obviously using Midjourney version 5 because version 4 didn't have this tile function built in. So if we hit enter now, as you can see, it now says that our suffix is pattern, tile, no watermark, etc. If you ever want to change the suffix or remove it, just type once again suffix, hit enter, and then leave it blank or obviously put something else into here. If you leave it blank and hit enter, then it will remove the suffix entirely. So in order to start creating your first pattern, just type forward slash imagine down here and then hit enter. And now we have to put in two different things right here. First of all, a topic that we want to generate. Think food, nature, different materials, hobbies and people's interests essentially. Now I did try quite a few different animal patterns as well but animals do tend to come out quite a bit wonky so maybe version 5 is not quite there yet for animal patterns. Let's say for example we want to put floral right here so we want floral pattern that can already be enough and you could hit enter right now and it will add uh, suffix onto the end of this. The second thing we can add to our prompts is some sort of style or some keywords to help describe what the pattern should look like. We could also, for example, put watercolor and then hit enter. And this is just an example. You could also add some colors into your prompt to have more control over what colors the output has, but just some examples of styles that you can try out. We've got watercolor, 90s lo-fi, pixel art, minimalistic line art, colorful cartoon, polygon style, which I really like the look of, Synthwave, hand-drawn sketch, and many, many more. Once your prompts have been generated, you will get four different results and options to choose from. You click into these, inspect which one you like the most, and then you've got the option to either upscale your designs with the U1 to 4 buttons right here. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's say we like this bottom right one the most. You just click U4 to get that one in higher quality. If you like one of these quite a lot, but not it's not 100% there for you, you would like to see some similar options, then you use the V button. So if we want to do that for this image right here, we will click V3. And if you're not happy whatsoever, just click this blue uh, arrow symbol right here to rerun the entire prompt. Once you've got a result that you're happy with, just click on the image right here, then hit open in browser. And now you can right click on the image and save it to your device. Here are some patterns that I recently created to help you get some more inspiration and ideas. So this is forest, mint and pink. Then we've got mountain range in polygon style skulls and roses, planets and spaceships floating in space in a pixel art style, and then an exotic fruit pattern, and last but not least, vibrant brush strokes. If you're still lacking ideas and need some more inspiration, then head over to Prompt Base, which I will also leave a link to in the description. It's a really cool website where you can buy and sell prompts. You don't have to buy anything here, but you can literally just flick through these, look at the images, look for a style that you like the look of, and then the titles will give you some ideas in terms of keywords that you could use. For example, right here, we've got colorful complex line art. Maybe that's something worth trying out. We've got magical 
oil paintings. That looks very interesting. So just flick through these and look for inspiration that way. The next step to a process is going to be upscaling the image quality of our patterns to make sure they look good when printed. And there's a website called upscale.media where you can actually do free unlimited upscales, which is really cool. All you have to do here is drag and drop your image onto the site. In this case, when the result comes back, I would click on the enhance quality button right here to let it reprocess because with enhanced qualities turned on they do usually look a lot better so if you compare the before and after now you probably see that on the right hand side it looks a ton ton smoother now in some cases i have noticed if the uh, input file size is close to two megabytes or bigger then changing this to 4x will give you an error message which is quite unfortunate so you can only upscale it two times if you want a limitless upscaler then you might find value in one of my recent videos where I compare six different options which also most of them do have like a free trial option where you can upscale images four times or more and now we need to find some really good print on demand products to sell our patterns on and printify is a really good option here because they've got a massive catalog of products and also a big network of print providers to help fulfill your orders globally. So if you want to get signed up and started with Printify, there is a link in the description. You can create an account and start selling for free. And if you're new to Etsy, if you don't have an Etsy shop yet, which is sort of the most popular option to sell Printify products on, then there's also a link in the description which will give you 40 free listing credits if you open a new shop through that link. Because on Etsy, you have to pay for each listing that you upload, it's about 20 cents per listing. But to get started finding some products to sell on, just type into the search mask right here on Printify, all over print, and then it's going to filter out of the products that we can sell our patterns on, because all over print is ideal for pattern designs. And this is by default sorted by the most popular options. So one of the best sellers right here is a blanket, and I can definitely attest to that. I have sold quite a few blankets on Etsy as well. Then next up, we've got socks, which I think is a really great option because socks are quite cheap and they're the sort of thing that people can just have tons and tons of rather than you know, a blanket, you're not going to get 10 or 20 blankets, but you might get 10 or 20 socks. We've got pillows. Those are really popular options as well. I've sold a few of those on Etsy. Tote bags as well. That's a good option. What else can we see? There's some all over print t-shirts, which I've personally not had a lot of success with, but it's definitely worth considering as well. The can cooler option. I haven't tried this yet, but this is definitely interesting because these start from $2.79, which is so cheap. So if you can sell these at like a $10, $15 price point, somewhere in between there, I and mean, you can easily have a good margin for your profit. So just scroll through this, look for ideas. There's nine pages of all over print products tons and tons of options and I'm going to show you what this looks like if we create a design on a square pillar right here just as an example once you've found the product just head down to the print providers in this case we've only got one option but if you have multiple options just compare the star rating in terms of which of the print providers performs better and obviously the pricing is also quite important once you've found the one you like just click on start designing and once you're on this page you can just drag and drop your pattern into this editor and it will upload onto the product now make sure that you actually use the upscaled version of your pattern and not the original mid journey version once it's been uploaded into this you can size it down and then scroll down a little bit on the right hand side to where it says create pattern if you tick this option we will automatically repeat the pattern all over your product and you can once again scale this down a little bit you get an indication on the right hand side in terms of the resolution so the dpi is quite important one thing to note is if we go into the product variants and select all of the other big sizes as well if we change this to the 20 by 20 option it is going to have a lower dpi so always make sure to select the biggest option in terms of the the product that you're selling and then resize the pattern to get a high resolution or high DPI. You want to aim for at least 150. So once you're done configuring this, you can also click on preview, by the way, to get some examples in terms of what the mock-up is going to look like. And you can even get some close-up views right here of your pattern on the zipper, which is really neat. And then once you're done configuring, just hit save product. So the next step is going to be writing a good listing to help you get found on Etsy or whatever you're selling. And there's actually a really cool free web website that can help you out massively here called Top Bubble Index. Just head to the Etsy tag generator on there, 
put in your primary keyword and then it will show you some related keywords that it pulls directly from Etsy's best sellers. So really, really handy tool. And if you want to see a more in-depth tutorial of how to write successful listings, check out my full listing and keyword guide video, which is linked in the cards right now. And some other suggestions in terms of marketplaces to sell on, where from my experience, pattern designs or all overprint products can do really well, are Redbubble, Society6, or Zazzle. Oh, and of course, Merch by Amazon also has some really cool all overprint products, such as phone cases, pillowcases, and tote bags. If you want to learn the full step-by-step -step process of selling your designs on Etsy with Printify, then make sure to check out this video next, where I'll show you how to do research, check for trademarks, create a design, and then write a successful listing. Thank you.